focus. And I am a successful business owner who helps small businesses market smarter on the internet. And now, thanks to you, Vancouver, I am an international speaker. <laughs> I have not always been the strong, confident woman that you see standing here today. Let's rewind time so I can share with you a few of the lessons that I learned from my greatest mentor. Now you might be thinking that my mentor is someone who is magnanimous, and older and wiser. Not true. <laughs> in fact, when I first met him, he came in a very small seven pound package. I named my greatest mentor, my youngest baby, Davy. How many of you are parents? Most of you. If you're not a parent, can you imagine being a parent for now? Okay, cool. When you first held that baby, did you fall instantly in love with that baby? You did, didn't you? And even if you didn't say it out loud, you would protect that baby from any kind of threat. Well, just like most normal babies, Davy cried. He had occasional colic. He ate. He played. And he shit <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I loved all of it. Well, maybe not the shit. <laughs> the rest. Unfortunately, like an unexpected thunderstorm at a sunny, sunny afternoon picnic, all the day-to-day -day normal disappeared immediately when Davy was just three and a half years old. The diagnosis included uncontrollable, multiple kinds of seizures, and most devastatingly of all, a short life expectancy. Within a few short months, the seizures came unrelenting and uncontrollable, marching through his body like a bloody civil war tearing his body apart, smashing him into shopping carts and table edges, hammering him against the wall and hurling him to the floor. There was not a surface on this earth that my baby was safe around. As a mother, it was terrifying to watch my baby being assaulted by seizures over 60 times a day, every single day. How many of you have more than one child? Don't you want all of your children to feel equally loved by you? Me too. And my eldest son, Doug, had to suddenly go to the back of the line because it became impossible for me to split my time between my two children. Davy needed my help 24 hours a day. And even though I loved Doug just as much, and I told him so. I couldn't show him. For 10 years, I gave.
every bit of energy that I could muster up, knowing that my baby was going to die. Well, at the same time, I carried the guilt of not being able to give Doug the love, affection, and attention he deserved. I clearly remember the day that I realized that my life had changed forever. It was a warm summer day, and my young sons were playing in the backyard. And I interrupted them to showcase the bright yellow helmet that I had bought to protect Davy's head. And just like the girls on The Price is Right, I'm enthusiastically extolling the cool and styling aspects of wearing this fabulous helmet. While I was dying a little, no, it was a lot inside because in putting that helmet on his head, I felt the deep dread of knowing that my baby was going to go through life, however long that life was, with a guillotine hanging over his head, ready to drop at any moment. I was internally fully immersed in my sorrow when I noticed that Davy's face was lit up. His eyes grew wider, and I saw something completely contradictory to what I was feeling. I saw hope and excitement. And as I secured the helmet to his head, he's looking up at me with a big grin, and he's trying to peek around me. And he asks, where's my motorcycle? Brum, brum. <laughs> right there, in that moment, Davey taught me that life is what we make it. At the tender age of 13, my greatest mentor, my baby boy died. But he had lived his life more fully then few do decades longer. In fact, he had lived his life more fully than I had in my 40 years. Shortly after Davy died, I sank deep into grief letting no one in. This face revealed nothing. No sadness, no joy, no anger, and no pain. Oh, it was there, buried deep inside. Eventually, there came a time when I knew I could not go on like that. I felt the yearning to want to live. For many years, I traveled and searched for answers. Have you ever found something of great value in the most unexpected place. It's like finding the Mona Lisa while you're dropping your trash off at the dump. 
when that happens, don't you feel lucky? In my quest for answers, I was invited to an internet marketing seminar in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Reluctantly, I went. I met a speaker there. I don't know why he was there, but I can tell you why I believe he was there. He was there just for me because he wasn't speaking about internet marketing. <laughs> now, Dove Baron is a big hawkish man with arms like steel beams and legs like tree trunks. <laughs> I think he even had a tinge of green underneath that stage makeup. <laughs> he reminded me of the Incredible Hulk Kind of scary. <laughs> Yet, when he spoke, he had this nice southern drawl that would draw you right in. He planted those tree trunk legs in front of me and saw into me with his piercing eyes. And for the first time, I felt that someone actually saw me. I began to take the first steps towards becoming who I was born to be. And Dolph became my second greatest mentor. Through his guidance and the work we did together, many of the answers that I had been seeking began to reveal themselves. It was painful. I was frustrated <laughs> because I felt that some of those questions, they had no answers this side of the grave. A few months after starting to work with Dolph, I applied for and got accepted into the Authentic Speakers Academy for Leadership. Here, I was encouraged with a fancy boot, boom, to go <laughs> to depths I didn't even know I had. Now, you might be wondering why I've shared some of the most painful moments of my life with you. You know how some parents go around pretending that everything is okay by wearing a fake artificial smile? Believing that they are actually protecting their children by not being honest with them? And you know how impossible it feels for so many parents to recover after losing a child. The main problem is that child probably already knows the truth and most likely is pretending in order to protect the parent. Another problem is when a parent has the misfortune of burying a child. They feel like they have to repress the endless storm of emotions inside in order to continue parenting the remaining children by pretending that everything is okay. We all know that if we could find a way to communicate devastating information with our child and at the same time encourage them to live fully as long as possible, we would actually grow closer to that child 
and they would be able to trust us completely. We both know, or we all know, there's more than two of us in the room, we all know <laughs> <laughs> that if a parent who has suffered the tragedy of losing a child got the skills and the tools and a supportive team, they would be able to release the pain of that tragedy and fully return to living. Just let yourself imagine this right now. As you wake up in the near future, you're in your cozy, comfortable bed, just beginning to stretch and to yawn. And as your muscles gain movement, your eyes pop open, and your first thought is, wow, I'm still here. <laughs> This thought ignites a fire in your belly that quickly turns into a glowing fire, filling you with gratitude. You are overwhelmed with the feeling of gratitude because you realize with absolute certainty that no matter what unexpected twists and turns that your life has taken you through, you have been there not only for your children and the people you love, but most of all, you have been there for you. You realize that you are able to be at this place now because you have done what was necessary to get through the pain in order to feel the joy flowing to you from many different directions. As you sense the smile on your lips expanding, you feel especially grateful that you had the courage to reach out and allow someone to gently guide you so that you now really know yourself and the substance of your character and determination. You jump out of bed ready to take on the world because you are passionately involved in your life. You have deeply connected purpose and you have deeply connected fulfilling relationships. You go to put the toothbrush in your mouth and you stop. You look at your whole face in the mirror and instead of avoiding those eyes, you look deeply into them, remembering the woman that you were and realizing the greatness that is unfolding within you. Well, you don't have to imagine anymore because it's possible. Remember that woman I was back there, a woman driven only by duty, going through the day to day with a fixed artificial grin, hiding the truth from the people I love, never letting anyone in. When I was there, I couldn't speak two sentences in front of a group. And yet, here I am. <laughs> I have to be honest with you. A year ago, I would have ran from holding this microphone and using it. A year ago, I would be wearing nothing other than dark t-shirts and blue jeans. And you laugh because you remember. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I am able to be here now is because my desire to serve became bigger than the safety of playing small. 
That is why I enrolled in the Authentic Speaker Academy for Leadership. This training has changed my life in ways I cannot express fully. Besides being passionately involved in my life, being able to deliver my message in a clear and empowered way, I finally have deeply connected, fulfilling relationships. Not just with my friends, but with my husband, my son Doug, <laughs> and all of my grandchildren. The Authentic Speaker Academy for Leadership is a highly exclusive program, intensive, results-driven, that many apply to, and only a maximum of 12 Gideon per year. This year, we're nine. Should you do what's required of you, you will graduate and walk away confidently with the skills, the tools, and the foundation to take your personal and professional life to newfound heights. Now you, be honest with yourselves. How important is it that you are seen as a person of integrity, not just in words, but in actions? How important is it that you let go of the pain of your history in order to have the life that's waiting for you? What would it be worth to be operating authentically so you can be completely trusted in your personal and professional environment? What would it be worth to overcome what is stopping you from stepping into your potential? I gotta be honest with you, I got, a, I got a bonus I never expected. The leadership tools in the Authentic Speaker Academy for Leadership has had a profound impact on my marriage. I have been married for 27 years. That's a long time. <laughs> and my husband most often referred to me as, hey. <laughs> he, my husband James, now calls me my bride and my beloved. This alone is worth far more than the tuition investment. Because I am here to serve you, and because I really believe that the Authentic Speaker Academy for Leadership is really the only fast track success training that I have come across that incorporates your authenticity. I have a gift for you, valued at $197. So listen up. I am offering you this gift to give you the competitive edge. So if you want it, you're going to have to come and see me afterwards. <laughs> you know where, back of the room. <laughs> and I will schedule a 20-minute coaching call to tell you the three secrets that took me four months to learn on how to submit a winning application. 
My baby boy, Davy, he taught me to not live your life in regret, but to take action, to live authentically, on purpose, with passion, today and every day. I am Victoria Hargis. Thank you.